Hi everyone, my name is Bates. I'm with Gallup Technology Group and um, the presentation today is about passwords. Um, I can't stress enough how important they are. You probably know that already. One of the biggest problems that we see in the last few years, um, and, and I've seen that in the evolution of my 25 years dealing with uh, security and computers, is the fact that we have to remember so many more passwords and it's not easy or smart anymore to create some kind of a template that we can follow and just change a couple of characters based on the website you're trying to go and log into. We have to be a lot more sophisticated than that. So the problem that we have is that most people don't know what is a good password. Most people don't know how to manage those passwords and um, what are the implications if you're not doing what you need to be doing. So this is our topic for today. I'm not going to talk about myself. You're not here for me, um, so let's uh, get started. The the password world is is pretty scary. There's a few statistics I want to go over with you. 30% of Internet um, users have experienced a data breach due to a weak password. 99.9% .9 of blocked data breaches are due to multi-factor authentication. Let that sink for a second. 336 million Twitter or X or whatever their name is this week, users have been affected by uh, a bug that saved passwords. So memorizing passwords on a web browser is also potentially an issue. We'll talk about that as well and so on. We have about half hour today. I don't want to dig into too much of the dry information, but those statistics definitely help understand a little bit what a little bit better what the risks are and how vulnerable we all are. Um, we're looking at the, the layout of the Internet and, and what most people don't know is that there are three parts to the to the Internet world. The surface is what we all use and uh, where we browse. The deep web is where you're going to find some information from your bank or or secured information that is um, guarded or password protected uh, to see information about specific subscriptions that you have or download applications or social media, etc. stuff that you have to be logged into. And uh, the dark web is where the bad people are actually uh, trading information and uh, doing the bad things. 90% uh, of the content of the Internet is estimated to be on the deeper levels and not what we actually see on a regular basis. So that's uh, that's important information, and, and then now the question is, why should you care? It's not about necessarily just security. Um, there are other reasons why you would care about your password. For example, uh, protecting sensitive data. I know you, you want to make sure that your information or your client's information is not leaked out, and uh, financial records um, are not kind of traveling around the world, and everybody knows everything about your clients or your own banking situation. The um, uh, business continuity uh, also, again, if you're getting a breach, if if your data is lost, you might have a backup. It might be easy to recover your information. You might not even lose any data, but the downtime, the business continuity is going to be potentially a loss of revenue and damage to reputation, etc. Um, compliance and legal obligations. This is another thing. Excuse me, the allergies are killing me. I'm going to have to sneeze probably in a second. Um, compliance and legal obligations, you we all have those. If you have cyber liability policy, if you don't, you should definitely get one, uh, get a policy in place. <laughs> Jesus, sorry. I hate April in Arizona and June, July and August. Um, preventing identity theft is another uh, another area that we definitely need to think about, about password. Uh, protecting your passwords and um, building trust. This is one of those things that um, if you show your customers how important data security is and password uh, security is for you, it definitely builds uh, reputation and, and a good one, trust, etc. So there are a lot of password managers out there. I wanted to show this list over here uh, that is um, a little bit outdated, but it's a year, a year or two old. But what I highlighted over here is LastPass. And you can see that um, LastPass had 21% of the market, which was the highest out of everybody in 2021. And they had a breach twice, three times, and they lost a lot of reputation. So 
they dumped uh, in their uh, market share a lot. They're still trying to catch up, but um, I'm surprised to see that Google Password Manager is actually the top one. I'm not surprised. I'm surprised because it's not necessarily the most convenient or the most secured one from everything I read uh, in the last couple of years of research here, but it's definitely the most convenient one because almost everybody has a Gmail account and, and it's very easy to tie in together with your Gmail account. So um, if you're looking for a password manager, which we're going to talk about soon, if if you want to get something included and, and less complicated maybe to uh, enable and to use with your current life, digital life, consider Google and uh, the iCloud keychain. However, uh, Bitwarden that you're going to see on the fifth line over there uh, is our favorite. We're going to do a demo for that as well shortly. Now, um, the password memorizing of your um, of your web browser when your web browser is asking you to to get a password. Oopsie, hold on. Um, I want to show you real quick something here. Uh, the reason why we don't do password manager is because if I go to uh, let's open Facebook, for example, and now let's say your web browser already uh, got the username and password entered over here. And if you think that this is something that is secured, I want to show you real quick something that I've shown in the past in a few of my webinars. But if you click over here, on the inspect element and you can see the ID equals pass, uh, oh, sorry, the type equal password. If you highlight it and change it to text, then the, the dots are gonna be replaced with the actual password that is typed in. So that's one thing that is really not secure. If somebody's sitting in front of your computer, they can easily take your password uh, or, or view the password and take it somewhere else and log in as you. Uh, somewhere else so you don't even know necessarily that they were on your computer. So this is um, one of those reasons why. And um, the uh, there are a couple other statistics over here that I think are important for you to to be aware of. Passwordless authentication and um, the use of, of smarter passwords, I would say, is really the future of what we've seen. 60% um, of businesses use hardware security tokens. Those are that little USB drives that allow you to uh, type in your password and then authenticate as a second factor instead of getting a text message, which is not really secured anymore. You're gonna get to type in your password and then plug in that USB drive and, and that will be the second form of authentication. There is one-time email links. There is the authentication that's um, certificate-based. I'm starting from the bottom. And 42% use private and public key pairs. Those are little technical terms that are not too complicated to explain, just we don't have the time for that right now. But there are ways to tie in your computer with the server that it's trying to connect to or the web application it's trying to connect to using specific um, security keys physical keys, digital keys, etc. So passwords are not necessarily the only thing out there to protect accounts. And uh, this is one of those things that I urge you to talk to your IT provider um, and, and ask questions about it if you don't know what that is or what options you have. Now, uh, let's look at some best practices. The first thing is password management that I want to talk about, and the recommendations that we give are based based on the NIST um, standards, the National Institution of Standards and Technology, and that's from back in 2016. I've been talking about it for many years, and the recommendations are still the same in most uh, most cases, but nothing nothing major changed after 2016 besides the fact that there are major uh, there is a major push to use two-factor authentication and go to passwordless authentication as well. But if you're sticking with regular passwords, um, there are a couple of things to consider. The first one is that there is a big difference between those two passwords, and the only thing we change over here is the capital letter. And I want to show you real quick what that looks like. This is um, a website that I linked on that um, uh, PowerPoint, and I want to show you here log log me in oops log me in now 2018 this is what 
I listed over there. Now there's a calculation over here that a massive cracking array scenario will take two years to crack this password. And that is actually outdated, I believe. Um, I think it's going to be much faster these days with the technology that the, the hackers have. But I want to show you what happens when we change the, the, any of the letters to capital letter. We're going from two years to 40 centuries. So the, the huge difference with by adding just one capital letter. And if I'm going to add another capital letter, we're going to 40 centuries. Again, it's not going to be changing much, but there's a big change between no capital letters and at least one. Um, here is what happens when we add a period. 1.49 million centuries. So there's a big, big difference between lowercase and, and letters only or anything that's added to it. Um, Size does matter in terms of passwords, and uh, the longer is better over here. Bare minimum is 12 characters that we recommend today. Uh, 16 is what we actually tell our clients to do. 16 characters will take a lot longer to crack than 12 characters. Um, there is There are a couple of, of ways to remember 16 characters, because that's what most people will say, like how the heck do I remember a 16 character password? If you're Using something like today, I choose to be happy, period. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity to use a bunch of characters. Look at the nose bird brings. Uh, this is a uh, four, five, 10, 16 characters over there by itself, and it's not a complex password, but it's a passphrase or a sentence. Um, there are passphrases that are acronyms. For example, this might not make sense to anybody here, but for me, I can tell you that uh, it stands for my Volkswagen broke down in 1995, so I walked home, period. I will remember that as if it happened yesterday. And this is, again, one of those things that you can use as a password, and it's a long one and complex, and it doesn't resemble anything from dictionary, and it's not any truths about your life, it's not your pet's name and all that fun stuff. So you want to choose unique and memorable passwords. This is the key over here. This is what NIST and Microsoft started recommending. We want to make sure that every password is unique and you don't repeat the same password anywhere else. And again, you will need a password manager for it. I'm going to demo, as I said, um, one of them, but any of them will be better than nothing. You want to make sure you don't recycle or use pa reuse passwords, and you don't want to use city passwords like you know password with dollar sign instead of the S, even though it's way more secure than just the word password. But hackers are not stupid; they will try that probably with the first ten seconds of their attempt to hack your computer or your cloud account or whatever. Um, don't use any truths about yourself. Um, if you set up password reminders or password hints, um, anybody can find out if they really wanted to, what's the name of your first pet or what you know elementary school you went to. Those are ridiculous amount of hints that you can give to your hackers. You want to try to vote truths about yourself. Again, if your son's name is Luca and he was born in 2007, that's not a good password over here. It's not hard for people to find that out. Couple more hints over here. Always use two-factor authentication, guys. I can uh, not beg you enough, I think, to enable that anywhere you can. And uh, you wanna use biometric passwords when you can on top of the regular passwords. It is better to not type the passwords on public computers and public Wi-Fi and, and use your fingerprint or retina scan or face print or whatever it is if your cloud solution or your computer device can actually um, accommodate that you can uh, you should consider using single sign-on uh, solutions like duo which is our favorite uh, one login octa those are solutions that allow you to have your let's say microsoft account password be configured to log into other uh, websites so you use your microsoft credentials and um, let's say you log into um, I don't know, Facebook, for example, and Facebook is asking you, do you want to log in with your Google account or you want to log in with your regular email address and password? If you can log in with your Google account, it's usually better because Google is a more secure platform than what Facebook at least used to be. So having your Google account extremely good, secure with a good password and two-factor authentication and use that account to log into other sites is smarter than just having another login information you have to remember. 
Um, use a password manager. Again, we spoke about that. There are a couple of cons and pros, obviously, like everything else in, love, in life. Um, there are uh, many uh, pros to that, obviously, in terms of not having to worry about remembering a thousand passwords and just remember one master password that will then autofill everything else for you. But again, you put all your eggs in one basket, so the basket has to be very secured and it's very going to be stupid to, to not have a good basket to invest in. Um, that's why there's some solutions out there that are free and some of them that cost money. There's a reason why some cost money and some are free, like everything else in life. We get what we pay for in most cases. Um, allow you to store other information and secure notes. It's not just for passwords, it's for your passport number and an image of your driver's license and other notes that you can um, share securely with your team or remember for yourself. And some of the good ones will have the break the glass, break the glass backdoor. For example, with Bitborden, one of the things that I like and you should consider if you choose a password manager is that if you if I drop dead tomorrow, um, my wife can actually request access to my vault. And if I don't, and I'll, I'm going to start my email, we'll start getting notifications that somebody is trying to get access to my vault. I assigned her email and her credentials to it, so only she can access it. She will request, I'm going to get alerts, I can deny it if I'm still alive. But if I don't reply within three days, I approved her to be able to log in and see all my passwords. It's a succession plan that you should have, especially as a law firm, for example. You can't just die with all your passwords and, and nobody's able to continue running business and supporting your clients. So the master password should be extremely unique, memorable, very unique, of course, and, and long. Obviously, always use multi-factor authentication. So with the two-factor authentication, um, we want to make sure that you understand it's something that you know, which is a regular password or the PIN, but then you're adding something that you have, a physical, tangible um, code that might be sent to your phone or a physical USB drive that you have to carry with you, but it's not something that you know, it's something that changes all the time, so you have to have access to it consistently on the spot to be able to provide the right updated information to log in where you where we want to log in. We're going to talk about real quick passport breaches. We have 12 minutes left. I promise we're going to be done on time. Um, there is a website called Have I Been Pawned? So let me show you real quick. I'm going to go check it out for you, and I'm going to put my uh, email address over here. Let's say my junk email over here, baitsaitiao.com, and we're going to let this engine figure out if that um, web, if that email has been traded in the dark web. So in this case, yes, there's five data breaches and they are, oopsie, um, they are listed on the bottom over here. And what that tells me is that when Adobe in 2013 got hacked, millions of Adobe accounts, blah, 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 my Yahoo address was there. And this uh, website also was uh, suffered a breach and my Yahoo address was there. And so was Twitter in 2023. 200 million records were so you just put in your email address over there and it is going to tell you if your email has been breached now what do you do if you find something here not much you can do that the information is already traded in the dark web you cannot take it out of there but that means that you you should you should know that for sure somebody has your email address and maybe other information maybe the password has been stolen or your date of birth or your address it depends what information was stolen on that breach it will tell that to you here and you can then realize, oh my God, I used the same password for Adobe back then and I haven't changed it. Or my Twitter password and my Facebook password are the same and now I know I've been breached, so I will change all the passwords that I used back there in Twitter. Now, there are five, four, sorry, seven, eight things that I listed over here that you should be looking at when you're getting uh, a suspicion that somebody has access to your account. Report it, change password, use strong passwords when you change it, enable two-factor authentication. Again, make sure you do it all the time. Monitor accounts. Um, if you have a service like ID Shield, for example, that's something I would recommend that you sign up with if you don't. Those are identity protection sites that can actually um, monitor the dark web and tell you if your email address or your passport number or anything has been recently traded in the dark web. It doesn't mean that it's definitely safe if you don't get those alerts, 
but it just means that there's nobody that's trading it most likely right now. Now, um, I want to show you real quick how to force two-factor authentication on your Microsoft 365. And um, let me go back here real quick, and I will open our uh, test account. Yep, give me a few moments here. Not a few moments. It's going to be much faster than a few moments, I promise. Um, if you want to look at it yourself, go for it. Um, there's going to be no reason why, as an admin on your own Microsoft 365 account, you would not look at that. But I'm going to go to uh, the admin.microsoft.com. This is a test account that we have. Over here, um, there's a couple of things I can do. So I'm going to look at the list of users. I want to show you real quick the easiest way to get to that. So from here, I'm going to go to multi-factor authentication. And that's one of a couple of ways to do it. And there is um, there is a legacy per user multi-factor authentication. So if I click on it here, you'll be able to see um, how it used to be. And you can see that it's disabled for everybody. So let's say I want to enable it for the Bates demo account. I can enable it from here and I can manage some other user settings, re uh, require selected users to provide contact method again, delete all existing app passwords, blah, blah, blah. So there's some features over here, but let's go back to the main screen after we clicked on the configure MFA and I'm going to click on get started. And there's a few features here that are very um, fun to look at. Uh, fun for me at least because I'm a nerd. And if Microsoft decides to actually load this stuff, that would be wonderful. Refresh. Okay, come on. You can do it. Give it five more seconds, and then I'm going to give up on this demo and maybe come back to that later. So three, two, one. Wonderful. So let me go back to my other um, so I want to show you real quick the um, Bitwarden. So this is a website I'm trying to log into, and it's asking me for my email address and password. I have my Bitwarden uh, browser uh, extension over here. When I click on it, I need to enter my main password. I already logged in today, so I don't need to put in my two-factor authentication. I set it up to only once a day. Now here I can see that I have some potential logins that I can add. Now there's a few other things over here. I have my account of Bates Livne, um, and I also have my wife's account over here on my own Bitwarden because she always forgets passwords and forget how to log into Bitwarden, so I can actually log into hers. But when I'm on mine over here, um, it will give me all the suggestions for anything that has to do with Amazon or AWS because we're on the Amazon.com URL here. So I want to show you, I'm going to click over here to have the username filled out. I'm going to click on next. It's automatically filling in the password, but if not, I can go back to here and I can click on the copy the password here. And then what's fun is I'm going to paste I just click on Control V to paste, and it's already set uh, pasting the two-factor, the multi-factor authentication code that I set up with Bitwarden. So I don't even need to go and do anything as far as going to a key, going to whatever. This is kind of like Google Authenticator and every other Authenticator app. And I'm going to log in over here, and I promise you it will let me in just fine. So this is one of the really nice things about um, Bitwarden. Another thing you can do is generate a password. So you click on it, it's suggesting something. You can set up, you want to search the password. Is it a passphrase or just the password? And um, I'm going to tell it how many words. So you can see it's adding more. And word separator will be a period, capitalized numbers. I can change all of that. So it's just going to automatically right away give me suggestion of passwords. I can copy it from here. And then I can, let's say this was creating a new account somewhere. I can paste that password over here. Another thing I can do is um, look for social security numbers, for example. I'm not going to search for it here because I don't want to show you some of the previews, but I can password protect again specific logins. If I'm going to go here, I can set it up to um, uh, what websites I want to 
associate this with and what folders I can organize those passwords. So again, a lot of cool things. And if you're having team, if you use teams or, or multiple employees and you can you want to share that password with others, I can share these passwords with other groups of employees or with my own family. If this is like a personal one, if it's a personal password for our bank account. I can share it with my wife if I want over here. So there's a lot of features that you can do with Bitwarden and many other solutions out there that um, that just are awesome. Uh, back to here to Microsoft, uh, just to go next, next, next. I want to show you what are the options, what are the recommendations, the Microsoft authentication, or if you want to have like a USB feed or two key, um, if you want to have a third party software like Duo, et cetera, you can add that. And you can see Microsoft thinks of SMS and phone calls and email as low security. Um, you cannot remove the email one over here, unfortunately, um, but it is an option. And once you uh, click on next over here, it will ask you who do you want to force it on? So you just choose, of course, all of your users. So that was the Microsoft 365 users um, to a face setup, and we already did the quick, very quick demo on Bitwarden and a couple of other things before we wrapping up. Um, if you want to scan this QR code with your phone or go to this URL, um, I uh, one of the things we offer is a domain and email assessment. So we will check the dark web for you and we check a few other things for your email security. There's no cost, no annoyance, no BS that goes with it. We just want to make sure you are secured and in good shape. Another thing that um, I want to suggest is uh, if you want to download our ebook for password best practices, uh, scan this QR code or go to this form, fill it out, and um, you will get a link to it. And um, the last thing is a quick video that I really love uh, that I created. It's on our YouTube channel. Uh, this is a hacking demo of how we can hack from a Word document. How can we hack somebody's computer and, and check their pictures on their phone and oh, sorry, on their computer and uh, change their background and look at their keystrokes and everything else from them opening a Word document we were able to send to them. So something to get scared about. Check out that video. And if you have any questions, now uh, is the time. I have uh, two minutes left. You can use the Q&A section over here, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. If you want to send me an email, um, this is my URL over there galloptechgroup.com slash bait. So scan the QR code. You can go to my landing page, my social media, or my email. Everything is listed there. You can reach out to me and I'm happy to chat there. If you have any questions, great. Please reach out at any point, any format. If not, it is 1128. We're even ahead of schedule. I'm super excited. Thank you for joining and have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye, everyone.